All right, Ripple XRP holders, this is big. It's happening right now over in BRICS, the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, dethroning the G7's economic supremacy. We're gonna be talking about that in this video. We're also getting into uh, XRP. I wanna get into Bitcoin as well too. And I wanna talk about where Bitcoin is in comparison to the US dollar index. I also wanna show you guys on the chart right here, the US two year versus the 10 year bond yield and what happened when we had these inverted yield curves right here that you guys can see back in you know 2006, saw one back in 2000, saw another one back in 1989. And where we are right now in 2023 with this inverted yield curve, what is most likely to happen next when the curve flips and when we see you know the two year go below the 10 year in terms of percentage? Because right now the 10 year is sitting at 4.33%, whereas the two years is at 5.04% and it could go even higher. So this is wild. What's about to happen next in the economy and then in the stock market too, when I show you guys how this relates to the S&P 500, uh, it's going to blow your mind. So comment 777 if you're feeling blessed, comment 777 if you're feeling bullish. If you're gonna become the first millionaire in your family tree, you know what to do. Let's run it. All right, bull runners, welcome back. So on the XRP price chart right now, not much has happened with XRP since the uh, crash from 62 cents, wicking all the way down to 42 cents. We haven't seen XRP retest this upward trending support yet. So on the RSI, you know, we did see a little bounce back above 30 right here, but we're still close to oversold territory. Doesn't mean that XRP can't go lower though. Uh, if we see a rejection from this downward trending resistance line right here, then XRP could drop all the way back down to 40 to 41 cents. And if that were to happen, I would be backing up the truck more than ever before because the RSI would shoot well below 30 on that. And I would expect to bounce off of this support right here. So XRP is not in too bad of shape right now with the partnerships that they're making and everything lining up nicely. The thing that's holding it back, like I talk about in virtually every single video, but I give you guys different angles to look at it, is what the Federal Reserve is going to do when they're going to pivot, when they're going to start doing a QE and start printing more money. And then also what happens to the US dollar and the DXY compared to other currencies is going to be based on this right here, the BRICS nations. Will it use XRP and send XRP to $5? That's the big question everyone wants to know. And then could XRP go higher than that? Because when we look at the chart right here, you know, on the left-hand side, you see the dollar on the, D the DXY, the RSI is sitting at 67 right now. We could push a little bit higher, get overextended right here. And this would most likely be, I think it would be some type of fake out for the dollar right here. If it would push up to this resistance, then I expect the dollar to come back down and to see a correction relatively soon. Now, the correction coming, it, the time frame for this, guys, you know, we're looking out uh, towards the end of this year, you know, when they start pivoting, depending on the two year and the 10 year, what I'm going to talk about and how this will affect uh, Bitcoin. There's, there's really few different scenarios here that we're looking at based on the past, right? When you look at March 30th of 2012 versus November 8th of 2015, August 30th of 2019, based on uh, Bitcoin's halving and where we were in those cycles, if we were to compare the time that it takes before Bitcoin to have in 2024, we compared that to how long we were, how far away we were from the, the halvings back then, it would look like this. November 8th of 2015, you know, we would dip a little bit lower, rally back up to this upward trending uh, support right here, which would be resistance now, and then consolidate sideways for an extended period of time. And then by 2000, March of 2024, start the rally uh, for November 8th of 2015. So something like that. Now for 2019, what people are comparing it to, it was it was absolutely disgusting. You know, no one no one wanted to go through this, guys. That was frustrating, right? You saw Bitcoin rally up, and we thought a lot of people thought that Bitcoin was going to break out when you saw it break above the the 200 moving average, the 50 moving average, and break this downward trending. You know, this falling wedge right here. But this faked everyone out, and then it dropped another. What did Bitcoin drop? 70 percent from there. And how long did it take before it broke that? It took 490 plus days, almost 500 days. Five hundred days before it broke out from that. That was grueling. That was painstaking. And while you're sitting at home watching your portfolio in a matter of three weeks drop down from on uh, right here, Bitcoin sitting at $10,000, you know, in February of 2020 to March, you know, in less than a month dropped 60 plus percent. If you had a hundred grand, you would have lost $64,000. 
it, that's enough to make anyone call crypto and Bitcoin a scam, right? You see it fall that much here. You're, you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, this is over. This is done. And the smart investors bought Bitcoin at $3,000 plus dollars, uh, right here. You know, I didn't, I didn't buy Bitcoin right here. I bought Bitcoin uh, at 9,000. So I was smart, but I wasn't that smart. Okay. I bought it 9,000, 10,000. And then um, I did mostly, you know, XRP and Ethereum and then uh, altcoins and all that good stuff. And so when we look right here, August 30th, would look something like this, meaning we still have lower to go and even could put it in a lower low, you know, all the way down to $11,000. And so that would be grueling. You know, that would be painstaking. That would be with the Fed breaking something in the economy because, okay, if the Fed broke something in the economy by raising interest rates and they don't make that pivot and we go into recession and something happens, there's like Joe Biden says, there's another pandemic that would cause something like this to take place. Now, the real question is, is how deep would the dip go? OK, how deep does the dip go? The dip goes pretty deep sometimes. You don't know how how low it goes, but you got to be ready to back up the truck all the way to the bank. So March 30th will be the opposite scenario. We would just consolidate sideways for a little bit, retest this upward trending uh, resistance right here, consolidate sideways, then break out. And really by 2024, we'd already be breaking out to, to the high. And so that would be based on 2012. Now we're in a very different situation than each of these, each of these previous cycles, but two of the cycles are pointing to, uh, pointing to a dip consolidation breakout. 2019 was just a bigger, a, a rough, a uh, worse year leading into 2000, 2020. And so on Bitcoin, on the RSI right now, it's sitting at 20. So I do think there would be a bounce relatively soon for Bitcoin. And this would be based on the dollar getting into overextended territory. So Bitcoin being all the way down here at 20 on the RSI, I mean, the last time we were even close to that was back in back in COVID. Are we lower on the RSI than we were in COVID? I don't think so. Let me see right here. 15. Not really. Yeah, yeah, we are. We did dip lower for Bitcoin on this, which is that's actually pretty crazy to think about that. So I do think Bitcoin will rally out of this. And that would coincide with something like this. And I could be wrong. It's not financial advice. Again, there's just entertainment purposes only. But on the relative strength index right here, I would expect it to come out of this and then get rejected from this area right here. And so that would coincide with Bitcoin potentially rallying up to this upward trending uh, resistance right here. Do you guys see it was support June? It was support in March. It was support in January. It fell below it. That's going to be a major resistance zone right here. And then I would expect Bitcoin to come back down and to come back down. And then I don't know how low it will go either way. The rest of in my prediction for the for the rest of this year is, you know, some type of sideways trading action, nothing crazy happening. And then ultimately we break out. I honestly think and I'm, I'm normally a bull long term, but I think the Fed's going to break something. I get this feeling that the Fed will break something and this dip could almost do a double. I, I feel like a double bottom could happen for Bitcoin. It could come all the way down to 15,000, maybe get close. I don't think I don't know, man. I don't think it'll go below 15K. I think it'll come close to it. Not enough. And it'll be some type of uh, V bottom. And it could be deeper if we go into some COVID part two. Sears is what they're calling it. So we'll see. We'll see. And this will be based on what I'm going to talk about with the two year to 10 year as well, too. But I do think the dollar in the short term is going to come back down. And that'll be based on what's happening with the BRICS nations and dethroning the G7 economic supremacy. So the BRICS countries collectively account for nearly a third of the global GDP. And the G7 once commanded over 45 percent of global trade in 1992. And they saw their share dwindle to about 30 percent by 2022. So BRICS surged from a mere teeny weeny little 16% to almost 32% within the same time frame. And so the BRICS is growing and their plan dethroned the dollar, right? Even U.S. officials, Treasury Secretary Janis, Janet Yellen acknowledged the potential risks to the dollar's hedge money. In India, notably made a historic move by settling its first oil payment in uh, the UAE, uh, to the UAE in rupees. In China and India, despite, you know, having their, uh, difference in interest, they're finding common grounds in this realm. And so when we look right here, the global reserve currencies in terms of Spain from 1530 to 1641, uh, NL was from 1642 to 1720, France was from 1720 to 1815, UK was from 1815 to 1920, USA 1920, how much how much longer could it go? You know, are we are we gonna are we gonna push much further than that? The U.S. is on the downtrend right now, whereas China, China is on the uptrend. 
China has not had their turn. It's time for China's turn. That's that's what's going to happen. I could be wrong, but it's looking like it's going to happen. And the tides turn, right? It happens every, what, 70 to 100, 120 years. So it's inevitable. This is happening. It's not a matter of if, it's just when and what country. And it's looking like China's going to be it. Or, or could it be Bitcoin? Okay, here's Wall Street's prediction. Could, or could it be XRP? Cryptocurrencies in 2025. Bitcoin 942,000, Ethereum 43,721, and Ripple's XRP at $8,000. Is that possible? Anything's possible, but in order for this to take place, we need to see massive liquidity flow into these markets. And so looking at Bitcoin's price chart uh, on the rainbow uh, price chart indicator, where we see we are in terms of fire sale all the way up to maximum bubble territory, we're down in a fire sale price right now. That doesn't mean we can't dip lower, because as you guys can see, you know, for the low, we were we were well below this. And it doesn't mean that we're going to break out of here anytime soon, because you guys saw all the way back in 2015, it took until 2017, almost what to 2000, not 2018, yeah, 2015 to 2017. So two years in this range. And so we just dipped down there by 2022. So we could be down here all the way to 2024. I think that's going to happen. I don't think anything's crazy is going to come out of this this year because the Fed is not printing. The Fed's still going to rise rates through the rest of this year. And the only reason why the Fed would print money is if some ca catastrophe happened to the bank, some catastrophe happened to the uh, economy, or they broke something. So the Fed's the arson and the firefighter, right? So the Fed would have to break something to then go in and firefight it to print money. And then that money would pump where? It'd pump into the crypto market. It'd pump into the stock market. And that most likely would happen uh, sometime around 2024 leading into 2025. They'll probably break something either at the end of this year or uh, early 2024. So we'll see. I think we'll be down here for a little while. We might rally up a little bit, you know, 30K. Um, if we go back to the chart right here for Bitcoin, a rally up to this upward trending resistance would be about 30K. Rally up to 30K, come back down, maybe test, you know, the the previous high of uh, July one more time, then see some type of bottom come, some type of V structure, depending on how deep that goes. You know, if it's a 2019 uh, or 2020 style COVID for Sears, uh, which is the pandemic that they're planning with Bill Gates and all all the elite, you know, that go to Jekyll Island type guys, they're they're doing the Harvey Harvey Weinstein, you know, whatever tours under the island or something that they're doing. Not here to spread conspiracy theories, but all those guys, you know what they're planning. They just want to make money from people and they plan they plan some crazy stuff. So when we're looking at the market cap right here, a total market cap for crypto, see above a trillion dollars right here on the on the MACD as well, too. One thing that's interesting is the MACD, uh, you know, these lines are going to cross right here. Now, does it mean that we're going to break out and go to the upside, you know, similar to what happened in 2019 where we pushed a little bit higher? Not necessarily. You know, we could lay flat for a little bit. It doesn't mean that the the histogram is going to cross right here. It doesn't mean that they'll cross and we'll push up. So we could go sideways for a little bit. But I do feel that we will break out of this based on the Fed having to print. The Fed will have to print at some point. They can't tighten forever, right? Their balance sheet is at 8.1 in terms of trillions of dollars, right? And we saw we were all the way up here, 8.9. So 8.1, they could tighten a few extra trillion dollars. You know, maybe they come down to seven, six trillion. That takes liquidity out the markets. We see, you know, the markets get sucked a little bit more. Then we see this inverted yield curve between the 10 year and the two year snap. They break the markets, the markets crash, the, the yield curve flips up. And then we see the crypto market dip. We see the stock market dip. I'll be backing up the truck. I'm preparing for that. You know, it, the economy will go into some another chaotic situation where everyone's stealing toilet paper from each other in the stores, except this time it'd be, you know, band-aids or flu medication or whatever, or oatmeal, right? And then everyone would be freaking out. Now, here's one thing that's interesting um, right here. When we look at the uh, two year to 10 year, I know it's a little bit of a mess right now, but what I've drawn here for you guys is these vertical uh, yellow lines that show when the yield curve was inverted uh, in the past. And so October, November 6th of 2006 right here, where we were in terms of percentage on the, on the two year, we were at about 5% where we were on the, uh, on the uh, 10 year right here, we were at about four, 4.5%. And so it was inverted, not by too much, but it was inverted nonetheless. And so as you can see right here, uh, November right here, we we're at negative 0.16. Once we saw the yield curve inversion flip and go into the positive 
by February of 2008. Well, what happened in the markets? December of 2006. Where were we in the markets right there? Well, if I go to the, the stock market right here and we go to December of 2006, we pull all the way back here for you guys and we see right here all the way to December of 2000 or let's go here. Actually, let's do this. Let's go to May of 2003 and let's see where we were on the um, on the on the two year. So this red vertical line right here, we came down from six, six, almost seven percent on the two year right here. We came down and we dropped all the way to one point two percent. So we saw the two year crash when the two year crashed. What happened in the stock market from the peak right here? Well, we were almost pretty much at the peak of the stock market. The S&P 500 was at 1500. And then as you see me move my cursor, we drop all the way down right here. We bottomed out on the, the two year before the stock market. Um, um, actually, the stock market bottomed out roughly around the same time, a little bit earlier, actually. Stock market bottomed out earlier and then the two year bottomed out shortly after right here on the stock market's double bottom. And then we saw it rally on out of here and start breaking back out to a new high on the on the two year of five percent again and then guess what in inverted yield curve at this yellow vertical line and then we saw another crash and so at that inverted yield curve where were we in the markets right here where we were almost at another peak not quite we we're at 1400 we rallied a little bit further while the two year um didn't do too much i mean it stayed at about four percent so it held the line at the moving average right here. And then what do we see after that? Once the stock market peaked in October of 2007, it started crashing down, so did the two year. Now, the stock market bottomed for this V-shaped recovery in March of 2009, and then it started to come back up for the S&P. While it was coming up, the two year was still, still bottoming. And so the two year bottomed right around September 11th of 9-11, right? So the two year came all the way down. We were all the way down here at 0.15%. And you guys remember what happened with this, you know, they started putting massive QE, quantitative easing, printing money, and then we went from 0.1% uh, all the way up to 3% again. And so I'm just looking at this objectively, and I'm not trying to be, you know, a pessimist here, but what happened right here when the two year rallied back up to 2.8%? Well, where was the stock market? The stock market rallied up, the S&P 500 rallied up to 2,900 right here, and then the stock market crashed. What percentage did the S&P drop? The S&P dropped 19%. Interestingly enough, we saw the, the two year drop as well too. And so while this two year was dropping, that was during the entire period from this drop all the way until uh, COVID. So we had lower to go. So during March, that was when it tanked and we saw the percentage go from, you know, 1.3% and then in a matter of what, less than a month down to 0.1%. And so they had to put the CARES Act, Donald Trump signed the CARES Act, the recovery plan, few trillion dollars into the economy, boom, started pumping it up. The two year is, where's the two year? It's above, it's 74 on the RSI. So history repeats itself, history rhymes. So what's gonna happen here to the stock market? Now we could push higher. It doesn't mean the crash is gonna happen right now, but it. In my opinion, the crash will happen and it's coming and it's going to be big and you better be ready for it. Now, if we push higher, okay, if we push higher and we break, you know, the, the, the high on the stock market and we keep pushing up and we keep pushing up, it's, it's just going to make the crash bigger on the two year because the two year, like I said, is at 5.048% on the two year treasury. And then we see it on the 10 year is 4.3%. So when this is inverted, it doesn't mean that the 10 year won't push higher. The 10 year could push higher too, because you see this Elliott wave count, wave one, was it 1.7, cracked it down to 1.1, wave three. We could even be in the process of forming wave three right now. But let's say wave three was 4.1%, cracked it down to roughly 3.1. And we're forming wave five, the final wave in this, in this Elliott wave. And then what we would need to see, what we would need to see next, depending on how high five wave, the five wave goes, you know, we would need to see, you know, an A, B, C on the other side. And so where we are right now is alarming. It's very alarming because we are in drastic over overly value territory for these, these bond yields right now. It's too high and it's too quick. They put too much money into the economy while they kept the rates super low and now they're paying the consequence. Well, we're paying the consequence of it. The Fed, Jerome Powell just does whatever he wants. I mean, that guy, you know, 
did that, he probably just loaded his bags and got ready for it because he knew the outcome that it was gonna that it was gonna have on these markets. And so right now we're inverted at negative 0.68 percent. You know that that was all the way back from 1980s when Volcker was raising the rates up and going absolutely crazy with that. So he's that's his idol. He's modeling after him. And so we just need to be ready for something like this, something like this to take place, something like this to take place. And then when we go to the stock market, you know, we compare it back on the, the stock market of where we were, you know, I'm preparing, I'm preparing for something like this. And so where we are right now in the grand scale of things, we might be doing just some little tiny rally back to the high right here. Obviously the time scale is different, you know, for where we are right now on the S and P 500 and on, on Bitcoin. But when in doubt, zoom out, you might be so micro zoomed in here on the chart. When you look at the S and P, you're like, Oh, the market's rallying. We're going to pass all time highs. But then when you zoom out, you just see a much bigger macro crash, you know, happening that, that could be extended for who knows how long. And so I'm ready for something like that. Now, how that would affect XRP. Well, there's, there's one of two scenarios here. Okay. Scenario number one is what XRP is currently doing right now. And, it's tended to continue to do, but, but XRP, I think will outperform Bitcoin, but it's been following Bitcoin. So anything Bitcoin has been doing with Bitcoin selling off XRP is selling off because liquidity It's just when liquidity flows into Bitcoin, it flows into XRP, it flows into Ethereum, it flows in the rest of the markets. Now, what we have to wait on for XRP is the SWIFT ISO 20022, you know, what the BRICS decide to do, this global uh, payment network, once it goes into play and this metaphorical flip sw switch flip that takes place using XRP for global transfers as that on the XRP ledger for their CBDCs and all that good stuff. And so that's what we're waiting for. And that would be the outlier. But I do think XRP will outperform Bitcoin in this coming cycle. And right now, it's basically the only altcoin that has clarity other than Ethereum, because they don't want to attack Ethereum since um, William Hinman, he dropped the bag on that. And so that's what we're getting ready for. I hope you guys are feeling bullish. You know, we'll update you guys on what the BRICS are saying and you know the whole outcome of this. But they said that they're not going to be talking about their the BRICS currency. It's more so about the payment network that they're putting into play. And so, you know, nothing too crazy right now. If anything, the best thing that you can do is back up your truck all the way the the bank, grab the bags, pack them, and stack them. Leave no bags left behind because the spending power of the dollar is going to continue to go down in value. That's the truth. And blockchain technology is going up in value. And together, we're all going camping on the moon. I will see you on the next video. I will see you on bullrunners.com. As always, you know what to do. Stay bullish.